Well, folks, we have a couple things we're going to talk about today, and one of these is just, it's not good, but it happens, and you figure we'd be used to it by now, but every time it happens to a major Nintendo release, it just makes me a little sad inside, even though excited in some ways that, unfortunately, I wish I wasn't excited, but I can't help it. And then the other thing we have to talk about also happens to deal with Nintendo in a small way. Well, a major way, especially if we're talking about a game coming to Nintendo Switch 2, but before we dive into today's news, it's just two pieces of it. I want to make sure to remind you that, hey, we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. So I would appreciate if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel, uh, drop a like. And you know what? If you enjoy the content and want to be notified of it, go ahead and hit that bell icon so you're notified of all of our live streams and future uploads. All right, so the first story here is, it's an obvious one. We're a week out from launch of Mario Wonder. And so what has happened? Well... The entire game is leaked online. Now, this is not something that I personally went ahead and verified. I have seen some ROM files and stuff floating out there on certain websites that I'm not quite sure if they're real or not. There's things you always risk sometimes, people faking things. There are other people that have posted screenshots. There are a few places on Reddit and other social media platforms that are acting as if the game has been fully leaked. Also, there's apparently been a data mine out there as well of the demos from like a Target or something like that. And apparently, I don't know, I, this is just something I've been told because like I don't wanna look because I'm trying not to be spoiled too much. But there is supposedly the demos themselves are actually the complete game, but with a 15 minute timer. I don't know. This is just what I'm being told. Again, I haven't even played the kiosk demos. So I'm not talking about firsthand experience. And no, unlike other times that games have leaked, I didn't really personally dive really deep into this for a couple of reasons. One, I don't really want to be spoiled on things in Mario Wonder. The, the, the spoilers in Mario Wonder are obviously going to be courses enemies, movesets, badges, stuff like that. And we're already seeing plenty of that from Nintendo. And while Mario Wonder is a harder game to spoil than say something like Tears of the Kingdom, also, I really dug into the Tears of the Kingdom stuff and went to different Discord servers to find out that it actually was being done and being live streamed on Discord. So I, while I didn't do that this time around, look, Mario Wonder probably did leak. And if it didn't leak today, it's going to leak this weekend. Look, it leaks all the time. People get early access to copies, retail copies, and oh, about a week out from release and leak. It happens to every single major Nintendo game. And it's going to be that way probably until Nintendo Switch 2 comes around and it hasn't been hacked yet. And thus it's much harder to dump files off of that platform for a little while, hopefully a couple of years. So what I'm just pointing out is that, hey, if you're worried about Mario Wonder spoilers, now's the time to maybe only pay attention to mostly official media and or maybe some content creators or other stuff that you trust not to put the spoilers out there. I can tell you right now, we are not going to be covering any spoilers for Mario Wonder. In fact, our, any coverage we do of Mario Wonder next week is just going to be focusing on official media and interviews and previews and reviews. We're not really going to focus heavy on any of the other stuff that could be floating out there that I'm seeing because that stuff could have been just because people data mined or, uh, you know, they have the full game out there and they're just straight up playing it. So, yeah, we're going to leave that stuff alone. That's how we're handling our coverage. I know we cover a lot of leaks. We also cover a lot of rumors. But I always have this rule that once the game itself has leaked out there, we stop because then we don't really want to dive into too deep of spoiler territory right before a game is about to come out. So that is what it is. It's our, it, it, Look, it's been happening for like seven years or well, I, I guess a, a little less than seven years. So it is what it is. All right. Our next story, though, is quite fascinating, and I could go into a number of details. I'm just going to go into a few things on it, and that is because the big news of the day is that, hey, the Activision Blizzard King deal is closed. Microsoft put up this trailer you're seeing right now announcing the merger to the public, and there's been a lot of things. Microsoft has a giant post on their blog and everything. We can go over all the PR speak if you guys really wanted me to, but I didn't think going over the PR speak is pertinent because essentially... The deal's closed, right? Microsoft now owns Activision Blizzard King. And if you have to know some of the particulars, it does mean that Bobby Kotick is going to be leaving on January 1st, 2024. He obviously could have been let go immediately upon the completion of this, but Phil Spencer did ask him to stay on through the end of the year just to sort of help with the transition. Obviously, Microsoft's got to get their leadership in there, all this stuff. Uh, and Bobby Kotick is going to be answering directly to Phil Spencer in this case while well, he's like acting CEO. He doesn't really get final say on stuff. Phil Spencer does. Either way, uh, this is just temporary, and he's going to be gone as of January 1st, 2024. And yes, uh, they are now all officially, all these IPs. I mean, Crash Bandicoot's the weird one. 
right? Used to be considered a Sony mascot is now a property of the Xbox family. Kind of interesting. But uh, while this is all cleared and it's sold and even the UK and the CMA is all done, uh, the CMA did release some statements on their government website. And it, it comes from Sarah Cardell, the chief executive of the CMA. And I just want to go over a few of the points they brought up uh, that Stefan Tatillo posted, because one of them is is interesting. Uh, Sarah Cadell, chief executive, said the CMA is resolute in its determination to prevent mergers that harm competition and deliver bad outcomes for consumers and businesses. We take our decisions free from political influence and we won't be swayed by corporate lobbying. We delivered a clear message to Microsoft that the deal would be blocked unless they comprehensively addressed our concerns and stuck to our guns on that. With the sale of Activision's cloud streaming rights to Ubisoft, we've made sure Microsoft can't have a stranglehold over this important and rapidly developing market, which is interesting because they also signed deals with a bunch of other streaming companies, but oh well. As cloud gaming grows, this intervention will ensure people get more competitive prices, better services, and more choice. We are the only competition agency globally to have delivered this outcome. Yes, they are the only ones to have forced them to sell streaming rights to Ubisoft, which is quite fascinating because they've also sold streaming rights to a bunch of other places. I'm not really, I'm kind of confused on what they think they did here. Maybe they think Ubisoft's going to be a major player. I don't know. Either way, but businesses and their advisors should be in no doubt that the tactics employed by Microsoft are not a way to engage with the CMA. Microsoft had the choice to restructure during our initial investigation, but instead continued to insist on a package of measures that we told them simply wouldn't work. Dragging up proceedings in this way only wastes time and money. At this point, I think the CMA is just being a little bit salty because the deal was going to close with or without their approval. Obviously, Microsoft would prefer to do that and not have to take games away from people in the UK. Anyways, it's all sort of a mute point because the sale did happen. And when it comes to, obviously, to us Nintendo fans, the biggest thing we have to look forward to is the 10-year deal will be going into activation here now that this deal is finalized. Now, we're not going to get the next, you know, the Call of Duty dropping next month. Like, we're not getting that Call of Duty. But the next Call of Duty that, you know, supposedly is going to drop next November yeah, we should be getting that on a Nintendo platform. And note I said Nintendo platform. It could be Nintendo Switch. More than likely, it's probably going to be the Nintendo Switch 2, which wouldn't be shocking if Activision already has development kits for. So I'm just throwing that out there that this deal goes into place now. It likely begins in 2024. And for 10 years, Nintendo's going to be getting Call of Duty. At least 10 years, because obviously there could be new deal signed extensions made all that stuff. Now, what this means for the rest of the IP out there, the overwatchers of the world that Nintendo is getting, or what this might mean for Crash and Spyro, we don't obviously know the long-term effects of this stuff. I assume many of these smaller IPs will end up like exclusive on Xbox platforms, but maybe Microsoft will share them with Nintendo. They've had a pretty good working relationship with Nintendo for a while, but I really don't know, right? This is all going to be down to Microsoft's decision-making, but Call of Duty is going to be coming to Nintendo platforms, and considering that we haven't had one the entirety of the Switch generation, despite having it on, like, the DS or the Wii U and the Wii, it's just nice to see that major IP come back, and I know, you know, starting with Switch 2, people are going to be pretty excited to know that they can have what is supposed to be an on-par version of Call of Duty. It's supposed to be content parody, gameplay parody, yeah, so it's, it's supposed to be the exact same version PS5 and Xbox Series get. We'll see what happens. Obviously, it's going to come down to how, how good does the game look? Does it run at 60 FPS? These are going to be the kind of things that will determine if people want to switch over and get the Switch 2 version versus obviously getting the version on other available platforms. That being said, folks, we're going to wrap things up right there. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a wild ride today, and you know what? I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Video.